going on again? Yeah. Question and answer. But the LNM, yeah. that's the width of the pad itself? Kind of the, more of an area than width, okay? The, the specification uh, is not free. Okay, so uh, uh, IPC 7351 is a, um, a pay-to-read pay kind of thing, okay? I have managed to find an A version of that document uh, out in the wild on the net. Uh, I don't think there's been that many changes between A and B, um, but basically the, 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 the nominal least and most is an area of the paths, and it's basically they're saying, the aerospace industry really wants high reliability, so they go for the wider pads and the cell phone people. They they don't want anything extra. They're, they're willing to take yield, you know, a slight reduction in yield to get extra millimeters of space on their cell phone. But the, the size of the real estate is fixed by the chip. The chip, the, the chip is actually yeah. Okay, so I need to describe this a little more. So there's a. This is a side view of a chip, and it has something called, most of them have a gold wing style of lead. And we go to a top view, and you'll see that this lead comes out here, and it's got like a, the bend is kind of there. And then the pad covers the area that touches, so the pad is right under there. Okay, and if we do a side view of what happens when you solder this, we have a little solder fillet there and a solder fillet there. If we do a head-on view, well, I'm not going to be able to draw this, but I'll do my best. And this is the pad. You'll have uh, some solder fillet so sliding out to the side. So, a uh, an M is a really big area, an N is a little smaller area. And an L is basically just the space underneath this loop. Just enough. To, so there's probably only a couple thousandths of an inch extra space there. And of course, when you're using um, least size pads, your equipment has to be more precise to place the pads if you're doing pick and place. Cell phones, they've got really good equipment. So did that answer your question? Okay. Uh, so I always use the nominal because that's, you know, good. and they actually have inside the spec tables for what to do for each different kind of lead. And there's about, I'd say 15 or 16 different leads that they talk about in there. J leads, uh, no lead packages, going leads, uh, um, round leads for, they have some round parts with, Round them. They, they've got them all covered. They know how big those leads should be, how, how, how big the footprint pads should be to get an acceptable level of uh, solder. Okay. And uh, I assume that there's some issues with, you know, different formulations of solder have different, you know, um, wetting areas. I and mean, that's, that's, that's beyond what I'm able to talk about. So, so I've, I've read through the A version of the spec and I'm going, hmm. I really thought this thing out. Okay. Um, I should also mention that most of the footprints are stored away in technical documents from places like JDEC, um, ES, ESIA. Not sure if I've got the initials right. You know, these are standards organizations. Interestingly enough, JDEC will actually let you get the the technical drawings for the footprint for free. The catch is you got to know the name, the number of the, the drawing. Yeah. Okay, so sometimes a vendor will have that number sitting on there and you'll be able to say, ah, that's the one I want. Okay. <coughs> when I downloaded the freeware version of the, uh, you know, the light version of PCB libraries, for me the most interesting thing was he had a 20 page document that listed all the vendor footprint sizes and the corresponding JDEC and ESIA uh, mapping. I'm like, oh, that's a keeper. Uh, 
because now, now you can go back to the original document and uh, go. Um, they're not, these drawings are not that easy to read. They've got, it's very, very, um, very, very standardized and they're, they're, they're using some rules that I actually don't understand. So I actually have to struggle to read the drawings sometimes. So, but usually you can pick off the dimensions and go. Again, we're getting a little ahead of ourselves. You know, what, what, do, you, what do you do when you need to do a footprint? And um, that's the footprint uh, editor. I had to, had to go through that with uh, schematic. We had to do, do some schematic stuff because there's no way you can do your schematic without uh, you know, having to learn that. But footprint editing, again, I'm going to push that off just a little. More questions? Okay. And with that, we'll go on to the next section.